Eleanor Clare Lynn Ostrom August 7, 1933 to June 12, 2012, was an American political economist whose work was associated with the new institutional economics and the resurgence of political economy. In 2009, she shared the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences with Oliver E. Williamson for her analysis of economic governance, especially the commons. To date, she remains the only woman to win the Nobel Prize in Economics. After graduating with a BA and PhD from UCLA, Ostrom lived in Bloomington, Indiana, and served on the faculty of Indiana University, with a late career affiliation with Arizona State University. She was Distinguished Professor at Indiana University and the Arthur F. Bentley Professor of Political Science and Co-Director of the Workshop in Political Theory and Policy Analysis at Indiana University, as well as Research Professor and the Founding Director of the Center for the Study of Institutional Diversity at Arizona State University in Tempe. She was a lead researcher for the Sustainable Agriculture and Natural Resource Management Collaborative Research Support Program managed by Virginia Tech and funded by USAID. Beginning in 2008, she and her husband Vincent Ostrom advised the journal Transnational Corporations Review. <laughs> Personal life and education Eleanor Claire Awen was born in Los Angeles, California as the only child of Leah Hopkins, a musician, and Adrian Awen, a set designer. Her parents separated early in her life, and Eleanor lived with her mother most of the time. She attended a Protestant church with her mother and often spent weekends with her father's Jewish family. Growing up in the post-Depression era to divorced artisans, Ostrom described herself as a poor kid. Her major recreational activity was swimming, where she eventually joined a swimming team and swam competitively until she started teaching swimming to earn funds to help put herself through college. Ostrom grew up across the street from Beverly Hills High School, which she attended, graduating in 1951. She regarded this as fortunate, for the school had a very high rate of college admittance. During Ostrom's junior year, she was encouraged to join the debate team. Learning debate tactics had an important impact on her ways of thinking. It allowed her to realize there are two sides to public policy and it is imperative to have quality arguments for both sides. As a high school student, Eleanor Ostrom had been discouraged from studying trigonometry, as girls without top marks in algebra and geometry were not allowed to take the subject. No one in her immediate family had any college experience, but seeing that 90% of students in her high school attended college, she saw it as the normal thing to do. Her mother did not wish for her to attend college, seeing no reason for it. She attended UCLA, receiving a BA with honors in political science at UCLA in 1954. By attending multiple summer session and extra classes throughout semesters, she was able to graduate in 3 years. She worked at the library, dime store, and bookstore in order to pay for her fees, which were $50 per semester. She married a classmate, Charles Scott, and worked at General Radio in Cambridge, Massachusetts while Scott attended Harvard Law School. They divorced several years later when Ostrom began contemplating a Ph.D. After graduation, she had trouble finding a job because employers presumed that she was only looking for jobs as a teacher or secretary. She began a job as an export clerk after taking a correspondence course for shorthand, which she later found to be helpful when taking notes in face-to-face -face interviews on research projects. After a year, she obtained a position as assistant personnel manager in a business firm that had never before hired a woman in anything but a secretarial position. This job inspired her to think about attending graduate level courses and eventually applying for a research assistantship and admission to a PhD program. Lacking trigonometry from high school, she was consequently rejected for an economics PhD at UCLA. She was admitted to UCLA's graduate program in political science, where she was awarded an MA in 1962 and a PhD in 1965. She married political scientist Vincent Ostrom in 1963, whom she met while assisting his research on water resource governance in Southern California. The teams of graduate students she was involved with were analyzing the political economic effects of a group of groundwater basins in Southern California. Specifically, Ostrom was assigned to look at the West Basin. She found it is very difficult to manage a common pool resource when it is used between individuals. In 1961, Vincent Ostrom, Charles Tybout, and Robert Warren published The Organization of Government in Metropolitan Areas, 
which would go on to be an influential article and introduced themes that would be central to the Ostrom's work. However, the article aggravated a conflict with UCLA's Bureau of Governmental Research because, counter to the Bureau's interests, it advised against centralization of metropolitan areas in favor of polycentrism. This conflict prompted the Ostroms to leave UCLA. They moved to Bloomington, Indiana in 1965, when Vincent accepted a political science professorship at Indiana University. She joined the faculty as visiting assistant professor. The first course she taught was American government at 7.30. Career Through her years of fieldwork, by herself and others, she found that humans were not trapped and helpless amid diminishing supplies. As part of her Ph.D. at the University of California, Los Angeles, she studied the water wars and pumping races going on in the 1950s in her own dry backyard. In her career, she looked at forests in Nepal, irrigation systems in Spain, mountain villages in Switzerland and Japan, fisheries in Maine and Indonesia. In 1973, Ostrom and her husband founded the workshop in political theory and policy analysis at Indiana University. Examining the use of collective action, trust, and cooperation in the management of common pool resources CPR, her institutional approach to public policy, known as the Institutional Analysis and Development Framework IAD, has been considered sufficiently distinct to be thought of as a separate school of public choice theory. She authored many books in the fields of organizational theory, political science, and public administration. Eleanor Ostrom was a dedicated scholar until the very end of her life. Indeed, on the day before she died, she sent email messages to at least two different sets of co-authors about papers that she was writing with them. She was the chief scientific advisor for the International Council for Science Planet Under Pressure meeting in London in March, and Johann Rockström of the Stockholm Resilience Centre wrote that, "...Lynn, up until the very end, was heavily involved in our preparations for the Nobel laureate dialogues on global sustainability we will be hosting in Rio 17 and 18 June during the UN Rio Plus 2.0 Earth Summit." In the end, she decided she could not come in person, but was contributing sharp, enthusiastically charged, inputs, in the way only she could." It was long unanimously held among economists that natural resources that were collectively used by their users would be over-exploited and destroyed in the long term. Eleanor Ostrom disproved this idea by conducting field studies on how people in small, local communities manage shared natural resources, such as pastures, fishing waters, and forests. She showed that when natural resources are jointly used by their users, in time, rules are established for how these are to be cared for and used in a way that is both economically and ecologically sustainable. She was senior research director of the Vincent and Eleanor Ostrom Workshop in Political Theory and Policy Analysis, distinguished professor and Arthur F. Bentley Professor of Political Science in the College of Arts and Sciences, and professor in the School of Public and Environmental Affairs. Research Ostrom's early work emphasized the role of public choice on decisions influencing the production of public goods and services. Among her better known works in this area is her study on the polycentricity of police functions in Indianapolis. Caring for the commons had to be a multiple task, organized from the ground up and shaped to cultural norms. It had to be discussed face to face, and based on trust. Dr. Ostrom, besides poring over satellite data and quizzing lobstermen herself, enjoyed employing game theory to try to predict the behavior of people faced with limited resources. In her workshop in political theory and policy analysis at Indiana University set up with her husband Vincent, a political scientist, in 1973 her students were given shares in a national commons. When they simply discussed what they should do before they did it, their rate of return from their investments more than doubled. Her later, and more famous, work focused on how humans interact with ecosystems to maintain long-term sustainable resource yields. Common pool resources include many forests, fisheries, oil fields, grazing lands, and irrigation systems. She conducted her field studies on the management of pasture by locals in Africa and irrigation systems management in villages of western Nepal e.g., Dang Duhori. 
Her work has considered how societies have developed diverse institutional arrangements for managing natural resources and avoiding ecosystem collapse in many cases, even though some arrangements have failed to prevent resource exhaustion. Her work emphasized the multifaceted nature of human ecosystem interaction and argues against any singular panacea. For individual social ecological system problems, the workshop in political theory and policy analysis was meant to utilize diverse scholars throughout economics, political science, and other fields to collaborate and attempt to understand how institutional arrangements in a diverse set of ecological and social economic political settings affected behavior and outcomes. The goal was not to fly around the world collecting data, rather, it is to create a network of scholars who live in particular areas of the world and had strong interests in forest conditions and forest policy conducted the studies. <laughs> Design principles for Common Pool Resource institution Ostrom identified eight «design principles» of stable local common pool resource management, she also discussed the eight «design principles» on Big Think. Clearly defined clear definition of the contents of the common pool resource and effective exclusion of external unentitled parties The appropriation and provision of common resources that are adapted to local conditions Collective choice arrangements that allow most resource appropriators to participate in the decision-making process Effective monitoring by monitors who are part of or accountable to the appropriators a scale of graduated sanctions for resource appropriators who violate community rules Mechanisms of conflict resolution that are cheap and of easy access Self-determination of the community recognized by higher level authorities, and In the case of larger common pool resources, organization in the form of multiple layers of nested enterprises, with small local CPRs at the base level, these principles have since been slightly modified and expanded to include a number of additional variables believed to affect the success of self-organized governance systems, including effective communication, internal trust and reciprocity, and the nature of the resource system as a whole. Ostrom and her many co-researchers have developed a comprehensive social ecological systems framework", within which much of the still evolving theory of common pool resources and collective self-governance is now located. <inaudible> <inaudible> environmental protection According to the Norwegian Institute for Urban and Regional Research Ostrom cautioned against single governmental units at global level to solve the collective action problem of coordinating work against environmental destruction. Partly, this is due to their complexity, and partly to the diversity of actors involved. Her proposal was that of a polycentric approach, where key management decisions should be made as close to the scene of events and the actors involved as possible. Ostrom helped disprove the idea held by economists that natural resources would be overused and destroyed in the long run. Eleanor Ostrom disproved this idea by conducting field studies on how people in small, local communities manage shared natural resources, such as pastures, fishing waters in Maine and Indonesia, and forests in Nepal. She showed that when natural resources are jointly used by their users, in time, rules are established for how these are to be cared for and used in a way that is both economically and ecologically sustainable. Ostrom's Law Ostrom's Law is an adage that represents how Eleanor Ostrom's works in economics challenge previous theoretical frameworks and assumptions about property, especially the commons. Ostrom's detailed analyses of functional examples of the commons create an alternative view of the arrangement of resources that are both practically and theoretically possible. This eponymous law is stated succinctly by Lee Ann Fennell as A resource arrangement that works in practice can work in theory. <laughs> <laughs> Awards and recognition Ostrom was a member of the United States National Academy of Sciences and president of the American Political Science Association and the Public Choice Society. In 1999, she became the first woman to receive the prestigious Johann Skitta Prize in Political Science. Ostrom was awarded the Frank E. Seidman Distinguished Award for Political Economy in 1998. Her presented paper, on The Comparative Study of Public Economies, 
was followed by a discussion among Kenneth Arrow, Thomas Schelling and Amartya Sen. She was awarded the John J. Carty Award from the National Academy of Sciences in 2004, and, in 2005, received the James Madison Award by the American Political Science Association. In 2008, she became the first woman to receive the William H. Riker Prize in Political Science, and, the following year, she received the Tisch Civic Engagement Research Prize from the Jonathan M. Tisch College of Citizenship and Public Service at Tufts University. In 2010, the UTNE Reader magazine included Ostrom as one of the 25 visionaries who are changing your world. She was named one of Time magazine's 100 most influential people in the world in 2012. The International Institute of Social Studies (ISS) awarded its honorary fellowship to her in 2002. In 2008 she was awarded an honorary degree, Dr. Honoris Causa, at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. <inaudible> Nobel Prize in Economics In 2009, Ostrom became the first woman to receive the prestigious Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. The announcement of her prize caused amazement to several economists. A Princeton economics professor said, "...including some prominent colleagues who had never even heard of her." The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences cited Ostrom, "...for her analysis of economic governance," saying her work had demonstrated how common property could be successfully managed by groups using it. Ostrom and Oliver E. Williamson shared the 10 million Swedish kroner Euros, $1 million prize for their separate work in economic governance. As she had done with previous monetary prizes, Ostrom donated her award to the workshop she helped to found. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences said Ostrom's research brought this topic from the fringe to the forefront of scientific attention. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 by showing how common resources, forests, fisheries, oil fields, or grazing lands can be managed successfully by the people who use them rather than by governments or private companies. Ostrom's work in this regard challenged conventional wisdom, showing that common resources can be successfully managed without government regulation or privatization. Topic death. Ostrom was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in October 2011. During the final year of her life, she continued to write and lecture, giving the Hayek Lecture at the Institute of Economic Affairs just 11 weeks before her death. She died at 6.40 a.m. Tuesday, June 12, 2012, at U Health Bloomington Hospital at the age of 78 after a battle with cancer. On the day of her death, she published her last article, Green from the Grassroots, in Project Syndicate. Indiana University President Michael McCrabbie wrote, "...Indiana University has lost an irreplaceable and magnificent treasure with the passing of Eleanor Ostrom." Her Indiana colleague Michael McGuinness commented after her death that Ostrom donated her share of the $1.4 million Nobel Award money to the workshop—the biggest, by far, of several academic prizes with monetary awards that the Ostroms had given to the center over the years. Her husband Vincent died 17 days later from complications related to cancer. He was 92. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Selected publications. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Books. Ostrom, Eleanor, 1990. Governing the Commons: The Evolution of Institutions for Collective Action. Cambridge, UK: Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521405381. Ostrom, Eleanor 1993. Schroeder, Larry, Wynn, Susan Institutional Incentives and Sustainable Development, Infrastructure Policies in Perspective. Boulder, Westview Press. ISBN 9780813316381. Ostrom, Eleanor 1994. Walker, James, Gardner, Roy Rules, Games, and Common Pool Resources. Ann Arbor, University of Michigan Press. ISBN 9780472065462.
Ostrom, Eleanor, Walker, James Trust and Reciprocity – Interdisciplinary Lessons from Experimental Research. New York, Russell Sage Foundation. ISBN 9780871546300. Ostrom, Eleanor Understanding Institutional Diversity. Princeton, Princeton University Press. ISBN 9780691122000. Ostrom, Eleanor, Canber, Ravi, Guha Kaznobis, Basudeb. Linking the Formal and Informal Economy Concepts and Policies. Oxford, Oxford University Press. ISBN 9780199237000. Ostrom, Eleanor. 2007. Charlotte. Understanding Knowledge as a Commons From Theory to Practice. Cambridge, Massachusetts, MIT Press. ISBN 9780262516200. Ostrom, Eleanor. 2009. Engaging with Impossibilities and Possibilities. In Canber, Ravi, Basu, Kaushik, Arguments for a Better World, Essays in Honor of Amartya Sen, Vol. 2, Society, Institutions and Development, Oxford, New York, Oxford University Press, pp. 522–41, ISBN 9780199239000 Ostrom, Eleanor 2009. Ostrom, Eleanor, Crawford, Sue E. S. September 1995. A Grammar of Institutions. American Political Science Review. American Political Science Association via JSOR. 89 3, 582-600. doi. 10.2307, 2082975. Ostrom, Eleanor March 1998. A Behavioral Approach to the Rational Choice Theory of Collective Action, Presidential Address, American Political Science Association, 1997. American Political Science Review. American Political Science Association via JSTOR. 92 1, 1 22. doi 10.2307, 2585925. Ostrom, Eleanor. Beyond Markets and States, Polycentric Governance of Complex Economic Systems. American Economic Review. American Economic Association, 100 641–72. air. 100.3.641. PDF version. See also Co-production of public services by service users and communities. Institutional Analysis and Development Framework References Further reading Alagika, Paul Drajos Ostrom, Vincent and Eleanor in Hamoe, Ronald. The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, CA, Sage, Cato Institute. p. 368. doi.10.4135.9781412965811.n225. ISBN 978-1-4129-6580-4. LCCN 2008009151. OCLC 750831024. Alagika, Paul Drajos, Betke, Peter. Challenging Institutional Analysis and Development, The Bloomington School. Routledge. ISBN 978 0 415 77820 6. Locker, Fabian. Third World Pastures. The Historical Roots of the Commons Paradigm 1965 
Quaderni Storici, 2016 over 1, 303 to 333. Ostrom, Vincent and Eleanor Ostrom. Rethinking Institutional Analysis: Interviews with Vincent and Eleanor Ostrom by Paul Dragos Alagica. Interview, Mercatus Center at George Mason University, 2003. Auer, Matthew, August 2014. Collective Action and the Evolution of Social Norms: The Principled Optimism of Eleanor Ostrom. Journal of Natural Resources Policy Research. Taylor and Francis, 6, 4, 265 to 71. Doi 10.1080/19390459.2014.941177. Topic external links on collaboration Eleanor Ostrom speaks on BBC The Forum Ostrom Workshop at Indiana University Eleanor Ostrom Curriculum Vitae Center for the Study of Institutional Diversity at Arizona State University No Panaceas Eleanor Ostrom Talks with Fran Corton Beyond Markets and States, Polycentric Governance of Complex Economic Systems, 2009 Lecture at NobelPrize.org. Works by or about Eleanor Ostrom in Libraries WorldCat Catalog Eleanor Ostrom News, Photos and Videos from the Herald Times, Bloomington, Indiana. Profile at the International Institute of Social Studies ISS. Video of Annual Reviews Conversations Interview with Eleanor Ostrom 2011. Dr. Eleanor Lynn Ostrom at Find a Grave